and welcome. You are watching the France 24 debate. Today we're looking at the US Electoral College on the night uh, when it is set to confirm Donald Trump as president. Uh, they are meeting in state capitals across the country and uh, expected to vote to confirm Donald Trump. There have been a few voices of dissent. Um, this is raising a lots of very important issues about the state of politics in America, divisions in America right now, whether there's a need for any reform in the system following uh, the election of Donald Trump and the divisions we've seen continuing. Let me introduce my panel. Uh, here on the plateau, I've got Henri uh, Land of uh, Sciences Po Paris, a lecturer here in Paris, uh, Franco-American author um, and, and I'm, I'm angry American at the moment, calling yes. for, for change to the system. Also joining me on the plateau, Mark Porter, the president of Republicans Overseas. Thank you very Hello. much, sir, for joining us. Thank you. Uh, joining us from New York, we've got Harlan Hill, a uh, political analyst, uh, pro-Donald Trump, I would say, at the moment, used to be uh, Democratic, but uh, fed up with uh, Hillary Clinton, I believe. And uh, also joining us from Washington, D.C., we've got Jim Arkidis, a uh, senior fellow at the Progressive Policy Institute that's uh, affiliated with the Democratic Party. Thank you very much to all my guests for being with us tonight to talk about the issues. Uh, and thank you for bearing with us as well during the, the international news we've had coming in tonight here on France 24. A lot, a lot of things to cover. A very... Uh, exceptional news year in many ways, and not only in the United States. Um, I want to bring up, just before we start, for our viewers, some tweets that we've had from the president-elect himself, Donald Trump. If we can get those up on screen um, and see them now, I'll read them out for our, our participants overseas. He's obviously a very active tweeter, Donald Trump himself. Here we go. Uh, the Electoral College says Donald Trump is a disaster for democracy. Now, I think this is interesting in the way that he said this back in 2015. Huh? He's not saying exactly the same thing now. Um, but let's put this point to our panel. Uh, Henri Lander, you were saying you think there is a clear case here for a huge reform of the US political system, that the Electoral College is indeed a disaster. I think there needs to be several reform of the American political system, starting with private financing of a campaign, uh, starting with let's attack gerrymandering. Um, and I believe the Electoral College is also something that we should reform. Uh, it's interesting that Donald Trump believes it's a disaster for democracy. I don't know. Believed. I he, think he's he a, said a during the campaign that he thought it was brilliant, and he mm -hmm. said it was brilliant. But the bottom line is a campaign for the presidency of the United States should not take place in just a handful of states, the swing states. All the states matter and all the people matter. And you mentioned diversity, which is important earlier. We do need diversity, but I believe more in the diversity of the people than in the diversity of the states with our just boundaries that are drawn. And for many reasons, including economic, including a lot of legal implications, a lot of different issues, um, our boundaries that are no longer there to divide us in a national election. And so I believe we should move beyond that. And with other many important reforms in our American political system, we need that to change. And that is why I talked about the last 35 years of politics that need reform, because in a, it, we have alienated the American population from the American political system excessively. And I believe that Donald Trump doesn't measure that. And what he did understand was that it was beneficiary for him during the election. And he talked about it that way. Um, and that he also surfed on an anger of the American population that I'm not sure he is really interested in fixing because he hasn't talked much about social inequality once he got to power. He hasn't talked about solving climate change. In fact, he's talked about actually that climate change is not something that is human induced and which is probably the he biggest threat to humanity. So I still I stand by what I say. Donald Trump, in my opinion, and in his positions should not be the president of the United States, but he was elected through the electoral college system. And I hope that in the next elections to come, we will be able to overcome that and get him out of office. Mr. Porter, I know you have a, a strikingly different view once again. Do we need to get rid of the Electoral College? Of course not. This is ridiculous. I mean, the whole reason they're complaining about the Electoral, electoral College now is because they lost. <coughs> Donald Trump did say this before, and he's changed his mind because he learned about what the Electoral College is. Just as my colleague says, he's learned and he's grown. He, is an, he will be an excellent president. Uh, Will he continue some, to change views uh, I as hope dramatically so. as that do you I think during the presidency? I hope he'll change views when he's wrong. I mean, this is what uh, Maynard Keene said also, that if he finds out that he's wrong, he should change. That's the whole point that Democrats have been saying all along. But this, this is the is fundamentals of American democracy, how the voting system works. 
Well, the idea of the Electoral College is also to protect smaller states. It's this diversity. My colleague here is from California. Of course, he wants the Electoral College to go away so they can have a power grab there so bigger states can control everything. Well, this if is it was not how it's proportionality of population. Uh, you then. had your turn. Yeah, yes. Okay, it's you not keep interrupting as well, so please let me finish. Well, you started interrupting, so now I'm interrupting as well, but yes. Um, is, is there a sense in which, Monk Porter, the Electoral College um, does deny the fact that Hillary Clinton is going to finish up with uh, the popular vote, more than two and a half million uh, more uh, uh, of a margin here in the... I already explained how that works. Their game was to drive the popular vote. If that's how you won, that's how we would have won also. Donna Brazil, the head of the DNC, diverted funds to build up the popular vote. So this is a different game. It's like playing checkers and saying I would have won at chess if I played this game. This is a ridiculous argument. Okay, Harlan Hill uh, in New York. Let me bring you in here. Uh, you have a large number of Americans who are feeling not represented, who are feeling angered by the political system, um, a lot of them feeling very uh, cut off from their president-elect, soon to be president. Do you think the electoral college system needs to be reformed, that it's elites um, not representing necessarily the will of the people? Campaign. Had we been working within the reality of a system where the popular vote dictated the outcome of the presidential election? But much like a parliamentary system in, in many countries, you know, you that's not how we do it. You elect it based on the number of, of uh, electors. And so working with, within that reality, the Trump campaign designed a strategy that was frankly probably one of the biggest strategic upsets in, in a presidential election in history. I mean, it was it was significant, not in terms of the numbers, not in terms of the blowout, but in terms of uh, the swing from the uh, popular vote to, uh, to to the Electoral College. The, the spread there is very, very large. Um, but I, I think that there are some upsides to the Electoral College. I mean, the, your previous guest has said that, um, you know, it, 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 the, uh, only a handful of states get a lot of attention in this system. But that would be true if, you know, we were electing a president through popular vote. You know, Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton would have spent all their time in Texas and North Carolina and Florida and California. There is a lot of good to come out of a system that promotes the power of smaller states, states like Iowa, you know, states like Arkansas, places that most places in the world wouldn't even think about. Um, but those voters now have a very important say within this system. And so there, there are benefits to it. And, you know, Republicans like Donald Trump would have taken issue with the Electoral College if he had lost, just like Democrats have now. But our goal at this point should be able to come together and stand behind the president-elect, because if we don't, this country is on a knife's edge. There are millions of Americans, both Democrat and Republican, that feel as though they're forgotten by the system. And if they feel like the system has disenfranchised them, uh, that's throwing you know, oil on the fire. Absolutely. Let me bring in Jim Markidis on this point. Um, how do you bring back into the fold Americans, particularly Democrats or left-leaning uh, Americans, who feel that they have been simply forgotten by this system? They feel they're being cheated in some way here. Well, at this point, Donald Trump's presidency is already uh, verging on being illegitimate. Um, he lost the popular vote. He was the beneficiary of Russian hacking. Um, and he refuses to divest himself of his, of his business empire, which means he's going to be subjected to the influence of foreign governments enriching him on the first day that he takes office. Absolutely. And so it is incumbent upon Donald, it is incumbent upon Donald Trump from the first day that he takes office in order to try and bring the country together to increase his own legitimacy by showing that he is going to be a unifying force. Well, we'll have to As wait and see whether, himself, whether he does that or not. But do you think political reform of the institutions in the US, of the Electoral College, do you think that needs to happen? Well, we'll see uh, tonight, because as I said earlier, we are on the verge of finding out whether the Electoral College is going to fulfill uh, the function that it was originally intended to, which is to put a check on a man who is manifestly unqualified to hold the, the office of presidency of the United States. And so if electors moved, move to confirm his, his election this evening, uh, then I believe we will have a serious grounds for discussion of how to reform the Electoral College so that unqualified individuals are not allowed to, uh, to occupy the Oval Office. However, 37 electors would have to desert Donald Trump to uh, deprive him of his majority. That's uh, an awful lot. 
Uh, and then, even if that happened, then it would pass to the uh, to Congress, and that's dominated by Republicans. And Donald Trump's just uh, won the presidency, helped Republican lawmakers to majorities in both houses of Congress. I mean, it's not. Is it likely that it's going to happen that he's going to overturn the electoral college vote? Sincerely, do you think, Jim Orkidis? Uh, no, I think I think what will probably happen is that Donald Trump's election will be confirmed by the Electoral College today um, and that the House of Representatives will confirm it on January 6th as it's supposed to. Um, but if we do have a significant number of electors defect or as we've had already a few cases of electors resigning because they said that they just simply cannot vote for Donald Trump, this is going to further damage his legitimacy. Uh, in the eyes of the American public and continue to place the onus squarely upon him to act as a unifying president. And as we've seen throughout the course of this transition, he has been extremely divisive, bullying and attacking of anybody who dares cross him, which is frankly not the conduct of, of someone we want in the White House. So we will see how this plays out over the course of the next several weeks. But Donald Trump um, uh, is in the position to do something good for the country, but, but uh, based on his conduct so far, I'm highly skeptical that he'll be able to. Mark Porter, you've been grimacing throughout that, this those is answers. And that, frankly, is this going to even deepen divisions? People who feel rejected by Donald Trump, perhaps disgusted by him, now feeling cheated? Disgusted well. by him. Frankly, look, if people cannot accept the election and they're angry because they lost, that's not really our job to unify them. They're going to have to go through therapy or whatever they're doing. A lot of Democrats here in Paris are going through therapy. I would suggest that to our <laughs> guest as well. Perhaps that might help. The American you're, people you're have moved uh, on. Millions of people, hundreds of no, millions of people. No, I'm talking about the Democrats here in Paris that are depressed. But the people Look, who didn't vote for Donald Trump and who maybe feel I'm saying that the him. majority of Americans want to make their country better and they've chosen Mr. Trump to do it. Mr. Trump will be legitimate because the Electoral College is going to vote for him. The House of Representatives will qualify and therefore he will be legitimate. Those people that say otherwise are only destroying and just trying to bring down our republic. So there are no problems at all. It's all, everything's working absolutely fine. And the, the divisions that we see in America today are, are, the are divisions not needing are reform. made by those people that cannot accept that they lost. They made up an excuse every week. The first week they made up Jim Comey, it's his fault. The next fault, it was a recount fault. Oh, it must have been somebody in Michigan that can't count. Then the next thing, it's the Russians' fault. Now this week, it's Electoral College's fault. What's it going to be next week? This is absolutely ridiculous, and the majority of people know that. A minority in Los Angeles, New York, Silicon Valley, the elite areas, they know it because they're trying to control the rest of the people. The rest of the people are understanding how our system works. We understand. We went to school. We studied this. Americans know this. Henri over here is all angry and wants to change things because, well, you don't live in America. You don't know the daily problems that Americans have. Mr. I Trump I is the person to do this. He's not only legitimate, he was the best qualified in the primaries. Everybody in the Republican side knew they could beat Hillary Clinton. There were 17 of them because Hillary is the worst possible candidate. Bernie Sanders stood up. Even the Democrats didn't like Hillary. This idea that Donald Trump is illegitimate because he cannot have a conversation. What about Hillary insulting us day after day after day? Mr. Obama there's a, there's went a, off. There's a, lot, there's a lot that we, we can say about Hillary no Clinton. We have sympathy for let this me, kind of ridiculous Let me stuff bring in Henri, Henri Lons. You, you, you like called him out in that. I'm not going to make do. my comments personal, which you have. Well, you've been making it personal I about didn't. Mr. Trump the whole time, and don't say otherwise. You Listen, have made it personal. You started no, this. I yes, sir, you upset. did. And that's why there's division. A bit surprised. No, the division in America comes from a lot of different reasons, some poor political decisions in the last 35 years. And I do uh, go back home to my country a lot, mister, so that is a little bit offensive for you to say that, but I'm going to move by that. So what I would like to say without you interrupting me, because I listened to your argument, which is fine, um, is that Donald Trump was also perfectly aware that there was a, a system where he thought it was rigged, and he definitely said that he was getting, he was getting ready to be a sore loser also. So that's another thing. But, but let's move on that. Let's talk about his positions, okay? And his positions on some key issues. Why are we talking about his positions? We're talking about the Electoral College. Focus okay. on one thing <laughs> here. No, no, no. This Everything goes I, back because you're again. angry because Mr. Trump won. We only have a short time. No, I'm not. Accept I'm angry we because Mr. Trump Except he won. We only have a short time. Can you accept he won? I have already accepted. Please. I never questioned that. Thank you. What, what I'm questioning is why you're talking to me in an offensive way when I'm trying to say that Donald Trump has some really 
poor positions on key issues. Why are we talking about Mr. Trump? This because is I'm talking about, because I'm here to debate about American politics and why there needs reform. And the fact is, is he doesn't understand the reforms that I believe are necessary he for American to your understand. reforms. Yes, I'm sorry, reforms he that I've been talking you. about. And Americans, either. Americans are very interested in more social and wealth equality. They're very interested in a secure future for the environment. They're very interested in healthcare. And and Donald Trump has positioned himself very poorly on those issues. And yet he and won. And he has flip flopped. And, and yet he, was he won. Can I can I ask you, Henri? Yes. Are these reforms that Thank you're calling you. for reforms of the electoral college? Are they reforms that are wanted by the liberal elite? by the coastal elites, by Americans living outside of the U.S. No, I don't think any Americans would be against having their voice in a direct democracy for the presidential election. In fact, that was a relatively offensive statement as well to talk about the elites in New York. I have no problem with the, the rural areas in the United States, and I completely respect their point of view. And if we had one person and one vote, that would be a, a real direct democracy. There's no problem in that. I don't see why you had to say that the elites here and there, there are plenty of people that live in poverty and in, in, in that don't live in the situation that you call elites in many urban areas. I don't see why that was called for. Harlan, Harlan Hill, you wanted to jump in there, I believe, We're sir? on television now. Yeah. I, I just want to say this is a really dystopic conversation because it's clear it's not – this doesn't just pertain to the presidential election. Republicans have won an overwhelming majority of the governors uh, uh, in, in this country. They've won an overwhelming majority of the state houses in this country. They've won an overwhelming majority of the House. They've won a majority of the Senate. They've won the presidency. Republicans have sweeped the nation. And they've done it at different times. This didn't just happen in November. This has been years in the making. And Democrats are in such denial that their solution to the problem isn't to do any self-reflection at all. It's to change the way the system works. Okay, that, I'm afraid. I mean, I'm afraid do that I'm, a little bit of self-reflection. We're gonna we're gonna have to wrap up and do our self-reflection at home. I'm afraid because this is unfortunately the end of the France 24 debate. There are so many huge issues here. I feel like we're, we're cutting them off short. But I, I want to thank all my panel for your views and your passion tonight as well, uh, being with us. Uh, my uh, my guest from the states, Harlan Hill. We just saw him there, a political analyst joining us from New York. Jim Arkelis joining us uh, from Washington. Thank you very much in. Indeed, and here on the plateau as well, uh, Henri Lande from Sciences Po Paris. Thank you very much for coming in. And Mark Porter, our Republicans overseas. We may not all agree, but there's certainly a lot to keep watching in American politics going forward. This isn't uh, going to be uh, a boring four-year term by any means. That's where we have to leave it for tonight's France 24 debate. Thanks very much for tuning in.